I never in a million years thought I could ever be scammed for anything, you know, because I'm always quite, I'm not a gullible person. Well, so I didn't think. Um, and the fact that, you know, my family was scammed for £90,000 makes me just feel, you know, absolutely to this day sick inside that I fell for this. Um, but these people are so convincing. And the reason why I'm involved is obviously being an impressionist and being an impersonator. You know, how did I not see through this impersonation? Because these people are impersonators. They're impersonators of people who try to be, try to pretend they're genuine. It could be people from either the police, from your bank, you know, from a government um, department. It can be anything or anyone. And in my case, it was through an investment fraud that we got scammed. So given, given your expertise, because of what happened to you, um, what what kind of red flags should people watching this look out for? What do, or what do you look back on and think? Oh, I wish I had seen that, and I wish I I wish I had seen that as a red flag. Well, I I funny enough always did have a gut feeling. It was my husband that you know really got involved in it um, from the start. Um, who had convinced me that this was all okay? He'd done his you know research. Um, which he did do. He did a lot of research. Um, it took a long time for him to actually hand over his first bit of money because I think he put a thousand pounds in first of all to see what was what was happening, and you know, over time he could see his money um, substantially, you know, going up every day, and um, and and the interest he was making, and he he got excited, and then he put another thousand in and then another thousand and then he got my father-in-law involved and then he got me involved um I spoke to these people I think in hindsight I should have met these people um but I don't even think that would have mattered because after I'd done Rip Off Britain I had a lot of people contact me and said they did actually meet these people and they were also convinced you know they had offices they had everything you know to show that they were legitimate people in, in in the stocks and shares the finance investment you know investment company canary wolf but you know it's really really difficult to see through it that's why you really really have to um think before you have any money and just be so cautious i would never hand out not even 10 pounds for something unless i investigated it and uh, well, we investigated this, but obviously not properly because when it came to the crunch, we found out that my husband didn't know that they weren't part of the FCA. Um, when I contacted um, Action Fraud, they said, you know, these people aren't, aren't registered. Is one of the main things for you not putting your money anywhere near something that isn't registered with the FCA, if you're looking in terms of investment? 100%, yeah, no, there have to be, but even even so, I think it's really hard. I mean, so many people are getting into crypto, um, and I know loads of people are now getting scammed with, you know, the whole crypto thing, because people are just setting up companies. Um, you know, really stop and think before you hand that money over. You know, it's it's so easy to you know want to invest your money and want to see it grow you know people are really struggling at the moment so any little money you've got just don't give it to these people because half of the time they are scams obviously what's happened to you it's not it's not unreasonable that you're skeptical about everything nowadays um, but for some people, they have to invest their money. Uh, they have to make a return on it, especially when we're looking at, at, at the inflation right now. So what would, what would your tips be in terms of doing due diligence on where you put your money? How can you get around these scams? Well, all I would say is if you're worried or if you're not sure um, about something that you have put your money into or given your personal information to, check out the Take 5 to Stop Fraud website. So it's a Take 5 website and it tells you everything. It gives you so much useful information. I only wish uh, I knew about it when um, it happened to me. But also contact your bank immediately and also Action Fraud.